what do you make of the movements in the market? I mean, would you say that the market's now more, I guess, fragile compared to just weeks ago? Yeah, there's a lot of volatility. I mean, you saw the VIX spike last week. You've seen the PBOC take a lot of liquidity out of the market. It was up to about almost 600 billion RMB was taken out, including about $150 billion on just one day, which is with the timing of it before Chinese New Year spot, bit spooked the market, I think. Um, where we see it is, I think we've had a very strong rally. Um, and so profit taking, I think, is actually quite healthy. We're along only, but we expect that there will be some more profit taking. What's actually needed, because we're in a reporting season, is really strong earnings to come through. So if you just meet expectations or a slight beat, you'll see some stocks, um, I think, continue to sell off, um, which is fine. It's, uh, it's to be expected after such a significant strong rally. Will we see those strong earnings given that, you know, even the vaccine rollout has been pretty uneven mm. and there are concerns that perhaps uh, even China could fall short in terms of GDP growth? Yeah, it's a really good question. I mean, even GDP, we just saw obviously in Hong Kong come out recently, negative 6%, negative 3 for the year, negative 3 for the last quarter. China, you've seen reasonably strong PMI data. You've said the most recent one was a slight disappointment, but we've had like 10 months of above 50 in terms of PMI. Um, when it comes to the vaccine rollout, you know, less than 1% of the world's entire population has been currently vaccinated. So there's a long way to go. Um, and we think that still those lockdown winners will continue to, to do well. So your Tencent, your Alibaba's, you know, games companies and tech as a, as a whole. SK Hynix reported really strong earnings last week. And we think that that's going to continue. So... We're just staying away right now from your hospitality and tourism plays, um, your super cyclicals, and, and, and just playing it safe with, with companies which compound over long term. So let's wait and see. But at the time, I think we're just going to see continued sort of um, good performance by those companies which have done well recently. How about retail traders, Sam? I mean, they've created havoc in the market. How much of a risk will they be? It's one of those ones. So, you know, I, I caught up with some bankers on the weekend, you know, our kids are playing together, et cetera. Um, and, you know, I'm talking to them about what, what, what's going on in, in, in their view. You know, I think Rich said it in terms of that retail revolt. It, it's, to me, um, call me old fashioned. I, I, I don't like it. I don't like seeing this significant risk on. I'm, I'm a very old fashioned focus on fundamentals, um, this crowd herd mentality. I understand why they're doing it, but it's not necessarily based upon the right method of, of focusing stocks in terms of what they're worth and, and why. And these short squeezes, you know, may it be something which is fashionable. It's not how we, 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 we play it. So we've seen it before. It's happened in China in 2015 when you saw a significant retail rally. Um, I just like to sort of look at it from a point of view and stand back. I'm not going to get involved in it at all. Um, at the end of the day, it's real money. It's real people in terms of investing as well. And, you know, there will be burnt fingers. Sam, that's just it. I mean, the old adage, uh, price is what you pay, is value is what you get. Uh, okay, and value, of course, is something people are looking at, particularly as we've seen growth do so well uh, over the last 12 months. But tell me here, Sam, uh, let's talk about some of your holdings and uh, what have you mm. been looking at of late? Yeah, so some of our big positions, so SK Hynix done well. We've got a position in C Limited, which is a Southeast Asia e-commerce play third-party platform. Um, we've got positions in Kakao, which is a messaging app business, online bank, um, and that's done extremely well as well. Um, a little bit of in terms of uplift, which will come through. They're still yet to report. Um, and then Baidu, which, you know, referencing more of a value play, around 100 a share when we when we started to, to, to really um, buy a lot of that position, it's done well as well. I mean, it's, it's been one of those years, I think, since inception, our funds up like 70%, 7-0 and outperforming its benchmark quite handsomely. But I think it's just one of those ones where you, you, you took the words out of my mouth. <laughs> You've obviously been on our website, you know, price is what you pay, value is what you get. Unfortunately, there's not a lot, a huge amount of value left in the market at the moment. So I think conservative expectations needed going forward. I mean, Sam, you look at some of these companies that you've invested in. I mean, we just talked to you, talked about them. A Baidu up 116% since you got it. BYD since you bought it up 424% here. Phenomenal. SK Hynix 76% uh, up since you bought it. So, Sam, they've done fantastic. Tell us the ones which are the dogs you've bought then. 
Yeah, there's been a couple. I mean, no one bats 100%, Rish, uh, including us. Um, and so we've had some some poorer performers. Um, fortunately, the ones that we have bought haven't really detracted um, majorly. Um, so um, we, we we didn't get the timing right in terms of the Indian banks. They, they've detracted, despite ICICI Bank reporting some great numbers on the weekend. We did sell our position because we were a little bit concerned about non-performing loans and credit costs increasing. Um, and so um, that one um, was a bit of a detractor. Um, so too with HDFC Bank for that matter. Um, some of the other stocks like CPO was one which we think was going to be a long-term compounder, but nonetheless, you know, tourism, which represents more than 10% of the economy in Thailand, you've had not much in terms of um, same sort of sales growth coming through. In fact, that is actually detracted. So CPO was, was a loser for us um, last year. So. Um, mixed and match in terms of in terms of you know what, where we've had some losers, but um, I very much you know it's been a fantastic 2020 20 year. We just got to continue to work really hard and find um, stocks which will continue to long term compound. Sam, just a headline to tell you about Anthony Blinken, the new U.S. Secretary of State, saying that the Burmese military must reverse actions immediately. Of course, we heard from the U.S. already saying that uh, it must be reversed or it will take action. Of course, this has to do with Aung San Suu Kyi uh, being... Um, mm -hmm. uh, 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 being in the custody of uh, the military as of uh, this morning. And the military has been saying that it will hold them in custody for the next one year or so. Sam, uh, Rish, go ahead. Yep. Uh, you know, I think the, the, the narrative would be then, uh, you know, how does this affect some of those um, emerging market equities, what's going on in Myanmar? I, I understand you don't have any direct exposure there. That's one part mm -hmm. of it. Uh, and what are the other, perhaps, unknown knowns or known unknowns, if you will, which may well be the biggest headwinds for 2021? Yeah, so sorry to hear that. Obviously, news that's happening, um, you know, it's, it's it's not something which is simply unique, although Southeast Asia is, um, you know, it's not a homogeneous place. You've got um, some issues, obviously, in Thailand and other countries as well. Um, hold, holding that aside, um, we're really focused right now in terms of the non-performing loans and the credit costs in the system. So, again, in Southeast Asia, you've had some of the Philippines Bank produce their results. Um, softer than expected and also um, throughout Thailand as, as, as well. Um, I think at the end of the day, there's a lot of people um, who are hurting. Um, you know, that tourism dollar is incredibly important to Southeast Asia. We have a significant underweight there. We just hope that, um, you know, the governments do apply fiscal stimulus that's required and it does go into the hands of those in, in need. Um, unfortunately, it is the poor um, in some of these Southeast Asian countries which are, are, are suffering the most. So answering your question, Rich, I think it's going to be fiscal stimulus and monetary policy. So they're the two things which we're keeping our eye on very closely. Um, we're just not out of the woods at all. I mean, who would have thought back in February last year that we we're going to be talking about COVID now? Uh, I, I don't want to speculate, but I think it's not unreasonable to think that, you know, in another year we're still going to be talking about COVID. So it's here to stay, unfortunately.